Chuck Miller here and welcome to my video clip on how to restore and actually use a vintage camera. What I have here is a Kodak Brownie Bullseye and this was a camera that was made between 1954 and 1960. It's quite a durable camera. This is big light plastic and I'll just turn the knob back here. You can see that it's completely mechanical and most of these cameras, you can still get them for a few dollars, and with a little cleaning, they work fantastically. Now, this camera takes 620 film. It, you can buy 120 film. 620 film is the same type of film, it's just on a smaller spool. We'll worry about that at another time. Right now, what I'd like to show you is how to clean a vintage camera like this. Before I cleaned this camera, I actually took some pictures with it. Let me show you what they look like. Not bad for a camera that hasn't been cleaned in about 60 years. One thing to know is that in this little element, you're going to get dust, you're going to get gunk. It happens. What that's going to do to your pictures, it's going to make them look soft. If you want that old timey postcard look to them, great. If you'd actually like to get some nice sharp shots, then you got to open this thing up. Now I know that you're thinking to yourself, it seems like it's kind of a scary thing. Do you really want to start fooling around with the inside of guts of a 60 year old camera? The great thing about Kodak brownies, they're real easy to work with, they're real easy to maintain. And all you need is a couple of screwdrivers and a little patience. Come on, I'll show you. Here's the bullseye again. As you can see, there are four Phillips screw heads right there. And if we open the back, there are two screws here inside the exposure area. What we're going to do is we're going to remove all six of these screws, and this plate will come right out. I'll show you. Take a Phillips screwdriver, put it in here, and you're going to unscrew these screws. All four of them will come out. Might take a little finesse. Remember, these things have been in your camera for about 50, 60 years and probably haven't been touched. So you might have to use a little elbow grease to remove them. Once they do come out, just make sure you store these in a very safe spot or you may not be able to replace them if they ever get lost. And that might be a bad thing. After you've removed all four screws, the faceplate comes right off. Just put this aside for now. We're now gonna go to the inside of the camera and if you can look here, you can see there are two screws on the inside. We're gonna just go ahead and remove those. Basically, we're just going to take like this and just unscrew. And same with this one. As you're unscrewing it, just make sure you hold on carefully. You don't want screws and parts flying all over the place. It comes right out. Now you have the interior, and this comes out too. You want to just put all this aside for now. You just want to look in here, make sure there isn't any gunk or dirt. And you can usually use an air blower to clean it all out. Okay, now that we've got the faceplate off, this is the lens assembly inside the faceplate. In order to get to the lens material, you just take this off, quarter of a turn, Put this aside. This comes right out. Now you can clean both lenses with uh, whatever preferred lens cleaning solution you use. These are glass lenses, they're not plastic. Um, I recommend anything from a mixture of alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. You can also use uh, some other lens cleaning fluids, whatever works for you. You will we'll notice that once you clean these things out, both of these elements will be much cleaner and much easier to work with. Okay. Now I've already cleaned these so I'm going to put this all back together 
And that's why we have the parts here, so we can make sure everything goes back together. Make sure you drop this carefully back in the back in the element. And this is pronged up, so all you need to do is just put this back in and give it one turn like that. Okay, now that's solidly in. Here's the interior. You remember we saw this. This is what it would look like in here. Okay. See there were no, two screws. Here's the second screw. Don't you run away. Okay, here's the interior again. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this back on. This is the protective plate. And from here, this will actually hold the film on the pickup reel and lead out reel. Okay. Now you can see how the holes are lined up. We're going to put these two these two screws, which I've already threaded, back on the exposure area. Okay. Tighten that up. Make sure it's all nice and tight. Nice and snug. You don't want to have light leaks if you don't want light leaks. Okay. Here's the magnifying viewfinder. I'm just going to drop that right back in here. As you can see, it only fits one way, and it wasn't the way I had initially put it. Eh. And the faceplate faceplate on so that it's trigger side first and then over here by the flash bracket. See? Then all you have to do is screw the screws back in. So this is now what the camera looks like when all the screws are reattached. You've cleaned it out, and now all you need to do is pack a roll of film in, go out and shoot. You can get eight shots wide on this type of camera. So feel free to go out and explore, experiment, have a good time. In fact, after I cleaned out this camera, I packed a roll of black and white film in here, and let me show you what those pictures look like. Really, that's all you need to do. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it inspires you to go out and experiment with vintage cameras and camera equipment. And if you have some great photos, love to see them. Have a good day.